Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, on the anniversary of his accession to the throne. His Majesty the King wished the Emir abundant health and the people of Qatar further progress and prosperity under his wise leadership. His Majesty healed the deep rooted ties between the two countries and the progress in various fields. His Majesty the King praised the civilizational and developmental achievements of the state of Qatar during the era of His Highness Sheikh Tamim. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's keenness to continue to deepen these distinguished ties between Bahrain and Qatar and the strategic partnership that unites them to achieve the aspirations of the two people. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of the State of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, on the anniversary of His Highness's accession to the throne. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, wished further progress and prosperity to the people of Qatar under His Highness Sheikh Tamim's leadership. His Royal Highness commended the wide-ranging achievements attained by Qatar during His Highness Sheikh Tamim's ongoing reign. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the strong relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Qatar, affirming Bahrain's commitment to strengthening bilateral strategic relations to meet the aspirations of both countries and their peoples. His Royal Highness sent similar congratulatory cables to the Deputy Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Thani, and the Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman bin Jazm Al Thani. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh sent a cable of congratulations to the Chairman of the Qatari Shura Council, Hassan bin Ali Al Ghanim, on the anniversary of the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, accession to the throne. The Shura Council Chairman underlined Qatar's civilised and developmental achievements in various fields during the era of the Emir of Qatar. He praised the depth of the strong fraternal relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Qatar, stressing the keenness to strengthen parliamentary relations between the two brotherly countries and invest them in consolidating the historical fraternal relations and ties and the existing strategic partnerships between the two countries, wishing the State of Qatar further security, safety and stability under its wise leadership. Minister of Labour Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Humaydan affirmed that Bahrain is a leader in ensuring secure and safe work environment for workers out of its keenness on their safety and health at various production sites, noting that the implementation of outdoor afternoon work ban is the best means to achieve that goal. He called on private institutions to step up their efforts to raise workers' awareness about summer diseases, highlight the risks of overworking under summer heat, provide healthcare and first aid, as well as find ways to reduce exposure to heat and humidity. The Minister praised the private sector company's compliance with the ban over the past years, which, he said, proves the employer's commitment to ensuring a safe and decent work environment for employees, pledging zero tolerance against violators. The Minister stressed that work at the existing projects will not be affected by the ban and that they will be completed at the specified times, especially as companies should reschedule the work timings during the ban, Humidan said. Under Article 192 of Law 36 of 2012, promulgating the labour law in the private sector, a jail term not exceeding three months and or a 500 BD to 1000 BD fine is the penalty inflicted on violators. The Kingdom of Bahrain will ban outdoor work during the afternoon in July and August and the ban on work under direct sunlight and in the open places will run from midday until 4pm according to the Ministry of Labour. The aim is to protect workers and ensure the safety from heat stress, sunstroke and various summer diseases and to reduce occupational accidents during the hottest months of the year. The Labour Ministry has embarked on an awareness raising campaign urging everyone to comply with the provisions of the edict. It also distributed brochures, multilingual leaflets and posts that include instructions and information on the impact of high temperatures on workers' safety and health while performing their duties. 
It also informed private sector institutions, health and safety supervisors about the requirements to protect workers from summer-related diseases and occupational accidents. The Labour Market Regulatory Authority carried out joint inspection campaigns in coordination with the relevant government agencies in all governorates with the aim of verifying compliance with laws and regulations and addressing illegal practices that affect the labour market. The inspection campaigns included visits to a number of commercial facilities, work sites as well as a number of health institutions and resulted in reporting a number of violations. The violations were noted and referred for legal action. The authority implemented a joint campaign in coordination with the National Health Regulatory Authority and the social insurance organisation in the capital, northern and southern governorates. A joint inspection campaign was also carried out in the capital governorate with the participation of the Ministry of Interior, represented by the Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, the Directorate of Police in the Governorate, in addition to the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and the Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture while the third campaign was in coordination with the Sentences Enforcement Directorate at the Ministry of Interior in the Capital Governorate. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ The head of Bahrain's Hajj mission, Sheikh Adnan bin Abdullah al Qatan, inspected a number of Hajj campaigns that arrived in Makkah al Makarama. al Qatan said during his meetings with the operators that the mission seeks to serve all pilgrims of the Kingdom of Bahrain and provide the best services and facilities that enable them to perform the Hajj easily. He added that the mission provided several facilities for the pilgrims with regard to the smooth entry into the Holy Land, whether by air or land, and that coordination was completed for electronic linking of pilgrims information between the ministries concerned with Hajj in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to ensure a comfortable stay and facilitate the movement of pilgrims between the sites. On the other hand, the security committee of the mission is preparing to hand over the electronic bracelets to Bahraini pilgrims after completing the sorting and ensuring that they conform to the list of pilgrims. The Saudi Data and Artificial Intelligence Authority, Zadea, has harnessed its advanced technological efforts to serve the pilgrims and the two holy mosques during the Hajj season by providing them with all facilities. These efforts are based on the task of Zadaya as a national reference in all aspects of data and artificial intelligence in organising and developing all means to ensure that the kingdom improves to leadership to data-based economies and artificial intelligence. Zadaya, through the National Information Centre, sought to ensure technological readiness and technical support for 15 border crossings in Saudi Arabia, sorting sites and security control centres by providing systems, services and technical products and raising the level of integration with other government agencies. Saudi Arabia is transforming creative ideas into reality and aims to ensure the comfort of pilgrims by adopting the ideas presented to the Ministry of Hajj at the Creativity and Ideas Forum. The Ministry has new initiatives annually, the most important of which is the Nusak Hajj platform, which has already been launched for Umrah and is currently being utilised for Hajj to register inbound pilgrims and some 100,000 outbound pilgrims, in addition to the Smart Card and the Smart App through which pilgrims can check on all the helpful information, referring to the importance of communicating with pilgrims through their companies or directly with them through several means, via social media, WhatsApp messages or SMS. The Ministry has a unified call centre for all inbound Hajj operators and is designed to facilitate communication with pilgrims. The Sunni Endowment Council's chairman, Dr. Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri, said that Eid al Adha prayers will be held at 5:07 a.m. on the first day of Eid. Sunni Endowment Council's chairman and members, as well as the affiliates of the Sunni Endowment's directorate, extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Bahraini people on the occasion of Eid al Adha, wishing them and the Arab, Arab and Islamic nations at many happy returns. The endowments affirmed the readiness of Eid mosques across Bahrain to receive worshippers. The mosque committee, formed by the Sunni Endowments Council chairman, announced the distribution of Eid prayer sites and mosques after the meeting it held in this regard as follows. East Hid, Al Kalea neighbourhood, Block 120 and the following mosques will be closed. Bishahin, neighbourhood's cabin and Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khaja. Hid, Block 111, nearby Khalifa Park Mosque will be closed. Arad Fort, no nearby mosques will be closed. Maharek, a nearby Maharek graveyard and the following mosques will be closed. Hamid Ali Kanu, Al Kawi Grand Mosque, Fatima Al Hute, Azaya Busitin, Umahat, Al Muaminin Mosque will be closed. Salmania, Ahmed bin Hassan Mosque will be closed. Hunenya and the following mosques will be closed. Al Rifa Al Sharki, Rifa Fort, Grand Mosque, Sheikh Al Lilwa bin Faris Al Khalifa, Sheikh Salman Grand Mosque, Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Gatha. Al Rifa, Al Shamali, Estaklal Walk, Abu Al Fatah Mosque will be closed. Al Hajiyat, a block 939, no nearby mosques will be closed. Heritage Village Asker, no nearby mosques will be closed. Hurat Sanad, and the following mosques will be closed. Sharifa Al Awadi, Fatima bin Ali, Mosque Cabin, Khalid bin Al Walid. Al Ramli, New Residential Block 715, no nearby mosques will be closed. Hamid Town Youth Centre, Roundabout 2, Ramla bint Abi Sufian, Mosque in Roundabout 1, will be closed. Opposite to Hamid Kanu Health Centre, Roundabout 17, and the following mosques will be closed. Musa bin Amir, Isa Muhammad Ali Moawiya bin Abi Sufian, Budaya, Abdulaziz Al Musa Mosque will be closed. Salman City, Salman City Mosque Cabin will be closed. Eleven mosques will be allocated for non Arabic speaking expatriate communities in all governorates of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Sunni Endowments Council said it had prepared all equipped Eid mosques with the needful furniture, appliances, and supplies to receive worshippers. The Council extended its sincere thanks and gratitude to all government entities that cooperate in preparing Eid prayer mosques. Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Information Affairs, Electricity and Water Authority, Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, the General Sports Authority, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, Government Hospitals and the Bahrain Authority for Culture and the voluntary teams for the success of the preparation of Eid mosques and the role in community service. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that the Kingdom of Bahrain is following developments in the situation in the Russian Federation. A permanent member of the UN Security Council concerned with international peace and security. The Kingdom stresses the importance of preserving stability in the Russian Federation under the leadership of President Vladimir Putin and applying the Sharia laws adopted in Russia in a way that preserves security and stability for the friendly Russian people. The Kingdom of Bahrain has granted the golden license to five investment projects whose combined value of investment projects in Bahrain exceeds 1.4 billion US dollars. The golden license will give companies and institutions many advantages through a package of facilities and special support. Bahrain launched a golden license providing incentives and streamlined services to foreign and local businesses with large-scale investment projects in Bahrain in an important step in the country's pursuit to incentivise investments and boost job creation and its fiscal and economic reforms. 
introduced by Bahrain's cabinet, which was chaired by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The licence aims to attract investments from local and international companies and create jobs locally. These are priorities of the Economic Recovery Plan, the blueprint of Bahrain's fiscal and economic reforms introduced in 2021 that has been driving force of the country's recent robust economic performance. Further advantages under the licence include integrated cooperation with the various government departments, a designated account manager from Bahrain's Economic Development Board, as well as potential review of existing laws or regulations where necessary and applicable. The first edition of the Ganoa and World Music Festival took place 24 years ago in the city of Issa Uria in Morocco. It was a small festival in the beginning with one stage only, but it witnessed massive success from the very first day. Moroccans and tourists from all over the world come to Issa Uria to listen to the concerts of the Ganoa masters called Ma'alams and the invited artists. Ganoa music comes from a tradition perpetuated in Morocco by the descendants of former slaves from sub-Saharan Africa. While Ganoa music has gained international recognition, its therapeutic rituals remain and are still practised in Isauria in the intimacy of Zawiya, the religious brotherhoods. In 2019, Ganoa culture was inscribed in UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage list, which made the festival even more popular. During the event, Isauria, which has 80,000 year-round residents, suddenly sees 25,000 people showing up during the festival. For this 24th edition of the Ganoa Festival, more than 300 artists are invited.